And welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about programming language news from 2021. And it's always fun to look at trends when doing this. I've recently updated my own language tool to improve the data that I get from GitHub. In the past, I was relying on this big query table for GitHub languages, which claims to stay updated. However, I found out that recent repos are not being included, so I'm now getting the primary language for each repo directly from the GitHub GraphQL API, although I can get the actual events for each repo from the event tables in BigQuery. And now that I'm including new repos, TypeScript is higher than ever, C is ahead of PHP, and Rust is actually very near to being a top 10 language. I've also started gathering Stack Overflow tag counts. And if we look at those, we find Python as the top language. And JavaScript and TypeScript combined are actually still below the Python level. Python has been very strong in some domains over the past decade. It's also interesting to see for Stack Overflow the yearly cycles for languages like C++, C, and also Java to some extent. Q4 always has the most questions on Stack Overflow, presumably because of fall semesters at universities. I currently don't include Stack Overflow in the mean score weighting because there's a number of languages for which I have not found the equivalent Stack Overflow tags to match the GitHub statistics. But at some point, I plan to include Stack Overflow by default and possibly turn off pull requests. Since there are bots out there adding pull requests automatically to repos, including Languish. And note also that R is very strong when it comes to Stack Overflow as well. Anyway, let's look at languages that are a little bit further down the list. I often think of these languages being vaguely in the same space, in the sense they can all run approximately efficient native code and are relatively modern and relatively in the same ballpark popularity. Dart did get a big boost from Flutter recently, but the languages at this tier that are really growing strong are Rust and Kotlin. And one interesting trend I find is with traditional functional languages. A lot of these seem to be going down in recent years. One possible explanation for this is that other more mainstream languages are picking up functional features. And so maybe some of the people who would have been doing Haskell, Clojure, OCaml, or F-sharp are doing things like Rust or C-sharp instead. And two languages that I've noticed now that I have more up-to-date GitHub information that are growing strong are GDScript and Zig. It's actually only after I've started grabbing the new data that Zig appears at all, and it comes onto the charts very strong. Then it's fun to compare a variety of languages that are currently in this approximate popularity space that are all vaguely systems programming languages. And again, worth pointing out, whatever you see in the trends here, this is only one view of one kind of data. And this is also a market share percentage of these events, events such as issues, pull requests, and stars. The overall communities could still be growing in number, even if the percentages here seem to be going down. Now, one thing I find interesting, though, here's GitHub's State of the Octaverse list of most popular languages on GitHub. And approximately, this list right here matches my top list, which also comes from GitHub statistics. The main difference here is that Go is present very strongly in the data I'm reading off of GitHub events, but they don't list it in their top. So I don't know what the difference is between what they're measuring and what I'm measuring. Meanwhile, into the news for individual languages, we have a whole bunch of freshly accepted proposals for ECMAScript 2022, including class fields and top level await, as well as negative indexing. There also are interesting things upcoming possibly for next year. And Python 3.10 came out, including some nice new things such as better union types, and of course the widely discussed structural pattern matching. It's possible that the improvement to the parser in Python 3.9 a year ago has helped contribute to fancy new syntax like pattern matching. Java on its new regular release schedule has had two releases this year, which includes things like records, thoughts about pattern matching, sealed classes, vector API, and more. And then in JDK 17, we get sealed classes official and much more full featured pattern matching expressions, at least as a preview. And the big news for Go this year is they have a beta with generics support. So lol no generics might be a thing of the past real soon. There were other releases as well during the year. And in their survey this year, they did find that of people who avoid using Go, generics was a number one wish list item, but better error handling and null safety are not far behind. In C++, Working Group 21 has continued on their progress towards C++23, although this community really likes to have in-person meetings 
for doing their planning. And COVID has impacted somewhat how their usual mode of operation works. We'll see how that plays out. But one of the places you can go to learn what's going on in the C++ meetings is Herb Sutter's blog. Various other community members also have blogs where they keep track of interesting goings on. And CPP Reference also has a nice list of C++23 features and the implementation status in various compilers. In the TypeScript world, they have new documentation and website, as well as a number of releases. Among the various changes this year are the long-awaited override support, and also some work that I think is really cool about template string types. So instead of just saying something could be one of a number of fixed string values, you can say the type follows some kind of string pattern with compile time type inference based on these string patterns. They also support the new upcoming top level await feature for ES 2022. PHP 8.1 came out with various language improvements such as explicit enumeration support, nicer function references, and intersection types. They've also introduced fibers, showing the continued trend across many languages for inherent support for coroutines and the like. Work continues on the C standard as well. Currently, people expect to see a C23. You can find drafts from the committee for the upcoming C standard. And another good place to go for updates is jean yves Menid's blog. Lots of useful information here about things that might be upcoming in C. .NET 6 came out this year with C Sharp 10 and F Sharp 6. C Sharp 10, among other things, adds global usings to make the language feel a little more scripty and file scope namespaces that help avoid an extra level of indentation. They also have record structs to complement the record classes that came out last year. And again, F Sharp 6 is out as well, which among other things includes support for .NET asynchronous tasks. PowerShell 7 is out as well. And not so much language, but more library. Microsoft has been pushing this multi-platform app UI as a way to build cross-platform applications. Notably missing from the list of supportive platforms is Linux. And until they get this repaired, I don't know why I would use this framework. Happily, other options do exist for .NET, such as Avalonia. Ruby 3.1 is out, which includes a new JIT option, as well as field punning slash shorthand property names, either for hashes or for named parameters and function calls. I love to see this kind of feature getting around. Swift had some releases this year, including 5.5, with lots of async await and actor and concurrency support included. Again, continuing this trend we see across many languages. Dart also saw some releases, including stabilizing the null safety and the form function interface. Type aliases, Apple Silicon, and other features also came out this year. And we'll see a lot of references to Apple Silicon across a number of languages. That M1 chip is getting a lot of attention. R4.1 came out this year with a pipe operator and shorter anonymous function syntax. Kotlin also saw some releases given their release schedule with support for JVM records, SIL interfaces, and inline classes. And Kotlin 1.6 came out with improved type inference, among other matters. Kotlin Native is also seeing continued development. And in big news for Scala, Scala 3 came out this year. One of the most obvious things about Scala 3 is the new syntax, which we can see on display here, along with their better sugar for algebraic data types. A lot of Scala can now use indentation-based syntax with an optional end keyword. And we see that it's new convenient union or sum types using the keyword enum, like hacks, rust, and maybe others before it as well. We also saw 3.1 release for Scala this year. And Scala Native, like Kotlin Native, is also seeing active development work. And in Rust, following the layouts from Mozilla earlier, we saw this year the formation of the Rust Foundation, which among other things, tries to coordinate support for Rust development. Rust also has a regular release schedule, so we saw a number of releases, including support for const generics. That was one of the big items this year. And a lot of other releases with interesting, cool things as well. But perhaps most interesting was Rust 1.56, with the Rust 2021 edition. Rust currently has this idea of additions that come out every three years that allow backwards and compatible changes at the source level while still interoperating with other packages written in previous editions. One of the things that's out in Rust 2021, for example, is value-based iteration for arrays. Also, interesting new syntax that might be useful in the future for things like formatted strings like in Python. The GHC Haskell compiler had version 9 come out this year with linear types, among other features. And GHC 9.2 saw support for Apple Silicon again. And also, record dot syntax, meaning that in Haskell, you can now access your record fields like you can in most other languages. And given how namespacing worked for fields in Haskell records earlier, 
This is a huge ergonomic improvement. And for Haskell community changes, Simon Peyton Jones left Microsoft Research and is joining Epic Games to work on their new Verse programming language. You can make some guesses what's included here based on who's working on it and things Tim Sweeney has said in the past, but I haven't found a lot of public documentation about their plans at the present. Elixir saw some releases this year, and since the Elixir language itself is fairly stable, there's not a lot of dramatic language changes going on. They're mostly focused on quality of life, including improved tooling. However, Jose Valim also announced this year NX or numerical Elixir, which enables compilation to GPU and CPU for a subset of the Elixir language. So you can write Elixir code that runs very fast. And Erlang that Elixir uses had OTP24 released this year, which interestingly hides down here in the release notes one of the most exciting things, which is that Erlang now has a built-in JIT compiler. It's not as fast as C or numerical Elixir, but it can apply broadly across anything running on the Beam virtual machine. We saw some additional follow-up releases for OTP as well this year. OCaml 4.12 came out, including thoughts on Apple Silicon, and continue to work toward the multi-core that we'll be seeing in OCaml 5. There's a lot of cool things coming up in OCaml 5 multi-core that I definitely need to study. And in the OCaml space, Rescript had some releases as well. Julia 1.6 came out with a strong focus on quality, and 1.7 with a few more things in the way of language features, and also Apple Silicon support. We also see multidimensional array literals, which are interesting to compare with equivalents from NumPy, MATLAB, or R. And also property destructuring based on names, which is something, again, I love to see in languages. NIM 1.6 came out in 2021 with a number of new language features. Also note these major improvements to ARC and ORC. So the goals here are to have reference counting that's optimized away as much as possible. And I think NIM is one of the most interesting languages to look at in the memory management space because of the work they're doing here. Hex 4.2 came out this year with a number of new features, including top-level fields and functions. This applies across a language generally now, not just like the top-level code we see in limited use in c 9. I'd also love to read the Hacks Evolution meeting blog posts. The discussions they have here, the features they're considering, I think is really fun to read. And for the Godot game engine, GDScript is now feature complete for the upcoming Godot 4.0. This includes support for typed arrays, including typed array inference, among other new features. And the big news for Crystal this year, they reached 1.0. It means there's certain promises of stability for keeping the language compatible going forward, while still working on language features and better platform support. And they had a number of follow-up releases as well after 1.0. D saw many releases this year, and a lot of interesting things always happen from release to release. And interesting new upcoming features are being worked on as well in the D space. The Vala language also continued to see development this year, which is an interesting language that's sort of C-sharp looking, but compiles to C, and was designed around support for the G-Object and GNOME environments. Zigsaw releases 0.8 and 0.9 this year as well, and among the many changes they have that I find interesting, although it might seem small, are saturating arithmetic operators. And really cool upcoming work in Zig is a self-hosted compiler. This is being designed from the ground up to be very fast. And I like fast compilers. The Odin language has been seeing monthly releases, including general purpose language features that are also handy for error management, and multi-pointers for better integration with C APIs. They've also seen cool new things like built-in language support for matrices. Racket saw some releases this year, including 8.0, which now uses the Shea scheme backend by default for improved speed, as well as easier maintenance of the language. Idris 2 has also seen some releases, and interestingly also rides on Shea Scheme. The Futhark Data Parallel Array Programming Language also has seen some releases this year, and I highly recommend tracking the official blog. Lots of very interesting discussion happens here about Futhark and languages in general. It includes comparison of Futhark and Dex, which are somewhat similar languages, but a compare and contrast is very interesting. The Gleam language also saw some releases this year. Gleam is a statically typed language that compiles to the Beam Virtual Machine like Elixir does, so it's part of the Erlang community. But interestingly, the 0.16 release also compiles to JavaScript as well, which, as we'll see here, creates relatively clean JS output. So Gleam might be a great option if you like static typing and want to target Beam backends and JS frontends. And a language I need to look into at some point is the Nix expression language. I keep seeing lots of discussion about the Nix package manager, so I really need to try it out sometime. Another language that's caught my eye this year is Coca which has effect type and handlers. 
There are other interesting effect languages out there as well, but this is the one that I've played with so far. It's a research language that's not ready for production use, but I find it relatively straightforward to learn and a very pretty language as well. And they've had a number of releases this year, and being a research language, some basic functionality might be missing, such as the ability to read from standard input. I've actually been working on a video with Coco where I wanted this feature, and they actually added this feature at my request. Watch out for the upcoming video. And before going today, I also want to plug the grain language that caught my eye this year. It's a functional language that feels perhaps a lot like ML, but to me has a much more approachable syntax and feel to the language for people coming from other mainstream languages. So I really want to keep my eye on grain. They also emphasize compiling to WebAssembly. So that's my news for the year. Obviously I missed a lot of things, so feel free to comment on that. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Well,